Welcome to Confessing the Faith, the theological and devotional walk to the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith. I'm your host, Sam Waldron, pastor of Grace Reformed Baptist Church in Owensboro, Kentucky, and president of Covenant Baptist Theological Seminary. Today we return to consider chapter 17 of the Confession, which takes up the important subject of the perseverance of the saints. Paragraph 2 traces the certainty of perseverance to five solid grounds in God's work of salvation. Consider what it says about these grounds one at a time. 1. This perseverance of the saints depends not upon their own free will, but upon the immutability of the decree of election flowing from the free and unchangeable love of God the Father. Since men are called and given faith because of this immutable decree, they will continue to be effectually called and given faith till the end. Matthew 24, 22, 24, 31, Romans 8, 30, 9, 11, 11, 2, and 29, Ephesians 1, 5 to 11. But consider particularly Romans 8, 30. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. But the second ground comes next in the confession, which reads, upon the efficacy of the merit and intercession of Jesus Christ and union with him. The Bible witnesses to both the efficacy of the work of Christ and the unbreakability of our union with Christ. Union with Christ in election, Ephesians 1, 4. In redemption, Romans 5, and 9, and 10. Romans 8, 31 to 34, 2 Corinthians 5, 14, and in calling, Romans 8, 35 to 38, and many other passages, teach that once formed, this union with Christ is unalterable, inviolable. Thus, by the living power of Christ in them, Christ's power, uh, Christ's people will persevere in a state of grace. Romans 8, 32 is perhaps the classic text here. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? And so we know that if Christ has died for us, we will be saved. But the third thing the confession speaks of is the abiding of his spirit and the seed of God within them. This is the third ground of perseverance. The indwelling of the spirit is not temporary, but permanent. The confession speaks of the abiding of his spirit and the seed of God within them. This implies, and I agree with the implication, that the seed of God mentioned in Scripture refers to the indwelling of the spirit of God. 1 John 3, 9, in fact, reads, No one who is born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. However, the assertion that those born of God do not sin is to be understood. This verse emphatically and unmistakably teaches the perseverance of the saints. Parallel statements about regeneration in 1 John assert the same thing. See 2.19 and 20, 27, chapter 5, verse 4 and 18. The Gospel of John clearly asserts, of course, that regeneration is the work of the Spirit. See Jesus' classic conversation with Nicodemus in John 3, verses 3 to 8. Christians are born of the Spirit, uh, of water and the Spirit, says Jesus. Other imagery connected with the work of the Spirit contains the same thought of permanence. The Spirit is depicted as sealing the believer, 2 Corinthians 1, 2 and other passages. Three closely related ideas are conveyed by the Greek idea of sealing, authenticating as genuine, John 6, 27, protecting from tampering, Matthew 27, 66, and marking as one's possession, Romans 7, pardon me, Revelation 7, 3 and 4, and 9, 4. When applied to the sealing of the Spirit, each of these ideas lead directly to the doctrine of the preservation of the believer. The Spirit is also depicted as an earnest, a deposit, pledge, or down payment. The idea that a true believer who possesses the earnest of the Spirit, 2 Corinthians 1.22, may totally and finally fall away from grace literally suggests, therefore, that God may default on his solemn commitments. The faithfulness of God is itself at stake in the preservation of the saints and is impugned by the teaching that people can fall from grace. 
Now you notice then that the first three grounds of perseverance have thus focus, attention, respectively on God the Father and the decree of election, God the Son and the work of redemption, and God the Spirit and the application of redemption. The gift of perseverance is from all three persons of the Trinity.